everybody and welcome or welcome back to Cooking It Real. If you're new here, my name is Kathy and I'm glad you're with me in the kitchen. I'm so happy that it's spring. I waited all winter for spring and now it's here. It's about mid-April and in East Tennessee that means that spring, although in all its glory and flowering dogwoods and azaleas and everything is beautiful, it also means the temperatures are starting to rise, which means even though it's still spring, summer temps are on the way. To me, as a gardener, that means that my fall and winter crops are starting to bolt, which means it's just getting too warm for them. They just can't hack it anymore. And it's time to pick them, eat them, get them out. They got to go. Today, what we're talking about is spinach. Now, I planted this spinach in the fall. This is our overwintered spinach. We have some more spinach that we planted in the spring. Hopefully, we're going to get some harvest out of that before it gets too hot. But let's talk about what we have going on today. I'm going to give you two recipes today featuring my homegrown spinach. The first one is going to be a spinach pasta, not pasta with spinach sauce. It's going to be the green pasta that you make with spinach. It's so delicious. I love it. You're going to love it too. And it's so easy. I'm going to teach you how to do it. Even if you don't have a pasta rolling machine, even if you don't have fancy equi equipment, you can still do this. And the second dish I'm going to make also with my homegrown spinach is a spinach pesto. And maybe we'll put the two together. Maybe we'll have spinach pasta with spinach pesto. You never know. Let's see. Let's get started. Let's start with the pasta. For the pasta, we just have a couple of simple ingredients. We have all-purpose flour. This is just about two cups, uh, two eggs, a little bit of salt, and the spinach. Now, this is my homegrown spinach. It's about four cups of spinach, or you can use one of those little plastic boxes of baby spinach. You can even use frozen spinach for this, and I'll show you what I mean once we get started. Let's get started. Okay, to start with, I have a saute pan on medium heat. I've warmed it up just a tiny bit, and I'm going to add all my fresh spinach. Now, this spinach has been washed and spun dry. There's still a little bit of water attached to it. Um, I left the stems on. Uh, this is just right out of the garden. washed spinach. And if you know anything about spinach or any kind of greens, you know that they cook down to practically nothing, which is what we're going to do right here. Uh, right now, I'm going to add about this much salt. Can you see that? That's about maybe a half a teaspoon. That's all we're going to do. Boom. We're just going to let this go. We're not adding any oil. We're not adding any water. We're not adding any butter or anything like that. We're just going to let the spinach go. It's going to give up its own juices and it's going to reduce down to just a tiny amount. But that's really all we need. All right, let's give that a minute or two. Okay, so this is just about all we have to do. This is cooked. Doesn't have to be cooked like crazy. And now we're just going to put it in. I have like a mini, a mini food processor. You can use your food processor, your blender, whatever you have. And we're going to whiz it up. Okay, we're just putting that little bit of water that went with it. Get all that in there. All right. Now, see that's all, all kind of, there's a little bit of stemmage, but we don't need all of this, so we can take any big pieces out. Now, let's see. We only need about like a 
couple heaping tablespoon or so let's just say let's just say about half of this which turns out to be almost a quarter of a cup okay see that right there that's almost a quarter of a cup well maybe just a little bit more just for good measure there we go all right now now we're going to make our pasta the way you know I made it on the board on the board with our hands so here's our two cups approximately of all-purpose flour and we're going to do what they call the well method we're going to make a little a little volcano here a little hole and in it we're going to put two eggs now you want to use the freshest eggs you can get organic if possible these are from the farm i like to put them into a bowl first just to make sure that whew, everything's good with them and there's no shells or anything like that okay that looks perfect one egg and two eggs beautiful beautiful all right so we're going to put those in there we're going to add our spinach and we're going to start with a fork and we're going to just mix up the egg a little bit and mix the spinach into the egg come on now now you see when you see this spinach it kind of looks like what you get when you have a package of frozen spinach which you could very very easily use and you could you only have to use that same amount about a quarter cup um you know two tablespoons a, a quarter cup is is really four tablespoons but two to three tablespoons will be plenty and two eggs this is enough pasta for four people or so the serving size says you and me both know when you see this i could eat this whole thing myself i could all right we're just gonna get this mixed up and now we're not going to add any more salt or anything like that because we already added salt to the spinach come on now here we go get it nice and mixed up now we're going to start adding flour a little bit at a time just from the edge we don't want to breach the wall just yet we're going to get in there with our hands too in just a minute or so but we'll start out using our fork so we be we be more classy that way now you know if you wanted to you could probably take your two eggs and mix it in your little mixer with your spinach that would work too but also another thing is if you don't have a blender or a small mixer or anything like that you can take let's make sure i get that staying up like this you can take um your spinach that you've wilted down in the pan and uh just chop it up super fine just like chop 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 the heck out of it Okay, let's get a little bit more, 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 more. This is fun. Now I'm going to show you how to do this the old fashioned way with a rolling pin. But if you have a pasta machine, whether it's a hand crank or uh, an attachment to your um, electric mixer, you can absolutely do it that way too. Okay, now it's not so so liquid that we have to worry so much. So we can just start really getting that flour in there. And always have a little bit more flour off to the side just in case you need it. You know, you can always add flour, but you can't take it away. So I'm going to put a little bit of this off to the side. And now I'm going to get in 
with my hands. All right. Fun. Now, if you're the kind of person that doesn't like to get your hands all gooky, you can keep going with utensils. You can do this with a mixer if you want, or you can wear gloves. But I think the best way, the funnest way, is to do it with the tools God gave you. Oh, look at that. I'm loving this already. All right, what we want to do now is we just want to, we're going to, we're kneading this pasta dough, okay? Now we're not kneading it as aggressively as we would if we were uh, making a bread dough. In other words, we're not like ugh, putting our, our back into it. But we are, you know, we're pushing it forward and turning it and pushing it forward like with the heel of our hand and we're going to try to see if we can get all of this um, flour incorporated we're going to do this for about oh eight to ten minutes if it's uh if that's too much for you you might want to use a machine uh, or you might want to enlist a little help you know, you do it for two minutes and then get someone else to do it for two minutes and then someone else to do it for two minutes and then you've had a little break, you do it for another two minutes and before you know it, ten minutes have, has gone by. If you can do it for more than that, feel free. Uh, what we're doing as we're doing this, aside from adding the rest of the flour in, in a manual fashion is we're developing the gluten okay and that's what's going to give our pasta the delightful uh, firmness and tooth feel that we like it's gonna be amazing now how much flour that you're gonna need depends on all kinds of factors we talk about this all the time like when we're making bread and and things like that uh, the humidity in the air, um, the temperature of your kitchen, um, <laughs> the alignment of the moon and the sun, who knows? And speaking of which, I got to tell you, I just got back from a great, amazing trip to Dallas, Texas, visiting my son and daughter-in-law, where we were fortunate enough to witness the total eclipse of the sun and it was my second total eclipse and I'm telling you it's an experience that you'll never forget if you get to see a total eclipse once in your lifetime you will never forget it if you get to see it twice you will want more and more it was absolutely amazing okay I feel like I'm getting a lot of this flour so maybe yeah i got pretty much most of it we're gonna what we're gonna do is what we always do with um doughs that we need especially is we're gonna have to wrap this up and we're gonna let it rest yeah we want this to to be kind of like play-doh we don't want it to be too too flowery so i'm gonna give it just a few more minutes a few more minutes so now you can see the green is coming out more. I don't think I'm going to add any more of that flour, but I am going to give it just because we, when we're rolling it out, we're going to add flour to the board. So we don't want to overdo to start. So let's just, oh, look at this. Yeah, that looks great. All right. Now we got this in a nice ball. All right, let's get some plastic wrap. Let this guy have a little rest. So while our pasta dough is resting, let's get working on our pesto. But before we do that, 
let me take this minute to ask you if you're enjoying this video hey how about give me a thumbs up i really appreciate it and it helps other people to find my channel share it with your friends if you like it and if you haven't please consider subscribing that way you won't miss anything these are also simple ingredients i have here about six cups of my garden spinach now Everyone's heard of basil pesto. That is your classic pesto. But did you know you can make pesto out of almost any green that you have, that you like? You can make it from spinach. You can make it from arugula. You can make it from carrot tops. You can make it from just about anything or a mixture of things. You can make parsley and, and herbs. All kind. Oh, it's endless. But today, it's all about the spinach. Uh, so I get about six cups of spinach here. This has not been cooked. This is totally raw. Like I said, it's just been washed, spun dry. Uh, I also have, I have a heaping quarter cup of hand grated Parmigiano Reggiano. I have some olive oil. I'm going to need a cup of that. I have uh, two thirds of a cup of walnuts. Now, most pe uh, pesto recipes especially basil pesto, call for pine nuts. Well, pine nuts, one, cost a mint, and two, I don't really like them. So I prefer the walnuts. That's what we're using today. I have a lemon. I'm going to need the juice of this lemon. And uh, this recipe calls for a couple garlic cloves. And in my garlic math, a couple means four, maybe five. But if you want to use two, that's what the recipe calls for. If you're not a big garlic fan, at least try one. One's not going to hurt you. You'll probably hardly taste it, but you'll definitely know you want it. And I need a little bit of salt and pepper too. And that's it. So let me grab my processor and let's get started. Whenever I start uh, making a pesto or making a, a hummus or anything that starts like with garlic that's going to go in the food processor, I definitely like to start it like this. Take my garlic, drop it down the chute. Gonna drop my walnuts. Get those all nice and emulsified. Now, I'm gonna put in my, oh, I got a little walnut left over. Now I'm gonna put in my six cups of spinach. I'll probably put in about half and then I'll put the other half. Just get it going a little bit. Uh, let's see, I might do just a little pinch of salt and little pinch of pepper. There we go. Get this going. Pulse. Just give it a mush. I might put in, here's my one cup of extra virgin olive oil. Put a little bit in there just to give it some moisture. Moisture. All right, let's put in the rest. Everybody in. Miss anybody? Escapees? You're all going to your pesto glory. Let's see what we got. Get you down there a little bit. All right, now I'm going to add my cheese. About a quarter cup. And then I'm going to slowly drizzle in the olive oil. Thank you. 
All right, I got about half of that one cup of olive oil there. I'm going to scrape down the sides. Make sure I'm getting all that garlic and cheese in there. I'm going to be adding lemon juice to taste. Maybe a little salt and pepper afterwards. We'll see. And you know, in my opinion too, uh, how much olive oil you add is really up to you. Um, do you want more than that? It's just up to you. You do you. All right. Now, let's see. I think I can see some walnuts down here that need to be mixed in a little bit more. Okay, you walnutties. It's looking good. Let's see what it tastes like. Mmm, tastes good too. All right, I'm going to give in. I still have like about a quarter cup of olive oil left, so I'm not done. I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it just a little half a lemon. Let's squeeze it through my fingers so catch all the pits if there are any left. I took most of them out. Oh, there's one shooting back at me. All right, let's see. All ready. For you. Get my napkin down. I think I need a little bit of pepper. Tiny bit more salt. Now remember the Parmesan is salty. Let's give this a whiz. Taste. This is all family, so that's why I'm. Oh, mm, that's good. A mm, mm, mm. little more lemon. A little bit more lemon. Mm, 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 mm. That is good. You know, it is, uh, it rivals basil. As far as I'm concerned, uh, no diss on basil because that's my favorite. A little bit more lemon. There we go. That's going to do it, I think. And then I'm going to do a little bit more salt as well. Okay. Just a whiz. I think I'm done with the oil. Let's see. All righty. Perfect. Perfect. All right. I'm not adding the rest of that oil. You can. You absolutely can if you want. Mm, 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 mm. All right. We're going to get this into a bowl. I'm going to clean up this bit of a mess. And our dough has rested sufficiently. So it's time to start making our pasta. All right, so here we go. Now the stew has rested uh, for it's probably been about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Room temperature didn't go in the fridge. Uh, I'm going to start by cutting it in half. Yep, and now we want to take the rest of the dough that we're not using right now, wrap it back up in the plastic, put it off to the side. All right. Need a little bit of flour on a board. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna try to make a rectangle. It's almost like how we roll out our crackers, isn't it? All right, let's see. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. A little bit of flour on our rolling pin. And roll this out. 
We don't want too much flour. We just want it so it's not sticking. And it doesn't really feel sticky at all. So I'm feeling kind of confident. Now normally when my husband and I make pasta, we do use our KitchenAid pasta machine. But not everyone has one of those. I feel very fortunate that I do. But it can be done by hand. And once again, we're going to roll it out to a shape. Uh, I say once again because I just did a video on making sourdough discard crackers. And we did something quite similar as far as rolling out goes. But this, but we want to make sure that we uh, make it nice and thin. Okay? Because... No one likes a thick, 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 thick pasta. We don't want it to be doughy or anything like that. We want this to be about, about an eighth of an inch thick. Think of what pasta looks like when you get it from the store. Or even if you buy fresh pasta from the store. Uh, it's about, well, I don't know. I don't know if you, you can even see that. About that thick? I don't know. We'll see what we get. We're just going to take our time. And if we have to, we're going to just let the glutens relax a little bit. So we're going to roll, then we're going to rest, then we're going to roll, then we're going to rest. Because if it springs back too much, that means it needs a rest. It's saying, hey! All right, I'm going to give it one more roll. Then I'm going to give it like a minute to rest. Okay, and I know I already told you, but while we're waiting a minute, now would be a great time for you to hit that subscribe button and give me that thumbs up button. Hey, why not? You got nothing else to do. We have to stand here for a whole minute. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, let's see. Little more rolling. Yeah, little more rolling. Look at how pretty that looks. You see all that, like, it looks like a, like a green granite, almost. I love that. And like I said before, you know, if you wanted to uh, use different greens, not just spinach or not just basil, or you could do a mix if you have only just a little bit of basil. Um, I mean, last year, oh my gosh, our basil harvest was pitiful. We didn't get anything. I don't know why, but we're hopeful for this year. But anyway, you can always use like, you know, 80% spinach and 20% basil or whatever ratio you like. You can use parsley. You can use... Like, I think I said arugula before. Arugula makes a great pesto. It's very, like, peppery and, and, and uh, zingy. It's amazing. All right, we're getting there. This is, it's still kind of thick. I want it to be thinner. Now, in your, if you have a hand crank, um, pasta machine or an electric one, you can get it down to so thin you can like practically read the newspaper through it as they used to say. If anyone reads actual newspapers anymore, I don't know. But um, you do want it that thin. If you can do it that thin. Now another thing you can do, now what I'm going to do, oh, okay, first of all, what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to make like um, you know, like fettuccine or tagliatelle or just a nice thin noodle. But you could 
use this to make raviolis. You could use this to make lasagnas. You could make, um, what's the, what's the one I'm thinking of? What's the, the big chunks? Big chunks, you could make big chunks. You could do this into any, any, any thickness, any shape that you want. So if you wanted to make raviolis and fill these or tortellinis, you know, you just get you a little cookie cutter or, or some round shape and just boop, 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 like something like this even. And doop, 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 cut out the circles and fill it with a, a filling of, let's see, you could do a meat filling, you could do a, a cheese filling like a ricotta, you could do a, like a, a vegetarian filling of, say, um, mushroom. That would be delicious, wouldn't it? Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. I am loving it. Oh. And you know, if you make this for your friends or your family, they're going to know that you made this by hand, with love, just for them, because it won't look perfect. You know what I mean? The, the, the cuts won't be like they were made by a machine, because they weren't. They were made by your hands with love, your loving hands just for them. Huh. All right. I think I'm going to give this another roll and then another minute's rest. And while I'm doing that, I am going to um, get some water on the boil. Now, these are only going to cook for like four minutes or so, depending on the thickness, of course. But the goal is just a fresh pasta. You cook it quick and fast. And then I think we're going to top it with some fabulous spinach pesto maybe a little bit of cherry tomatoes or something for garnish oh that's beautiful all right one more minute hang out buddy you're gorgeous we love you we'll be right back All right, I think this is about it. This is nice and thin. It's what I want to do. We're going to call it. Okay, now we're going to do it. Now, you might say, I don't have time to do this when I want pasta, even fresh pasta. I'd rather get it at the store. I totally understand. Listen, you don't want to do this when you only have 10 minutes to get dinner ready. Do this on a day when you've got an hour. An hour that you just feel like playing around doing something that is creative and nutritious and fun. Creative, nutritious, fun. Uh, what else? Artistic. Um, different. Not your ordinary thing. Not something everybody does. Don't, you know, just do it for fun. Put on some music, put on a movie you can listen to in the background that you've heard a million times and love it all. You know, you love it so much you want to hear it again. Um, but, but just do it. Just try it. If you try it, even if you don't do it with spinach, do everything I did except for the spinach and you will love it. It'd be just like regular pasta. All right. Now, this is how we're going to cut it. I'm just going to put a tiny bit like this because we don't we don't want it to stick 
together when we get it ready to roll, okay? Now remember, these are not going to look gorgeously perfect because they're not going to be gorgeously perfect. Hold it here. We don't want it to stick. Hold it here. Oh, look at this beautiful color. We don't want it to stick. All this flower is just going to come off in the water anyway. One more. Oh, look at that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Pull you down. Oh, yeah, gorgeous. Gorgeous. All right. Now you can use your little ravioli roll cutter or pizza cutter or something like that. I'm just going to use a knife. And now I can feel that right here and right here is where it starts to get thick. These are my thinner edges. So I'm just going to cut those off. Don't throw them away. They're still good. This is pasta too. All right, right here. All right. And now I'm just going to go like this. And do like a quarter inch, something like that. Okay, now I want to show you what this looks like. Look, look at that. Is that not gorgeous? Look at that. Gorgeous. Of course, you can do it thicker, you can do it thinner. You just do it how you want to do it. But if you're going to be cooking it all at once, you definitely want to make them uh, as uniform as you can so that, you know, so they so they do all cook at once. And you don't have some that are overdone and some that are underdone and blah, blah, blah. Look at that. Ooh, beauty. Now, if you want to, you can freeze this pasta. Uh, you can dry this pasta, although, you know, I mean, unless you're like trying to get rid of so much spinach that you have enough to make goo gobs and goo gobs, you know, I wouldn't even bother drying this because it's, um, it's better fresh. But if you want to make this ahead, like say you're having, uh, you want to do this for tomorrow night and it's this afternoon and you want to have it not till tomorrow night then you can dry it but you're you're not drying it dry 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 you're drying it just a little okay then what i would do is i'll show you in just a second as soon as i finish cutting this oh. see i've gotten a little bit thicker as i've gone down the line but that's okay All right, let's see, look at this, ah, look at that, ah, beautiful. All right, so you take like, you take some in your hand like this, you're kind of lining them up, but not totally. You're just flicking them like this. And then you make a little, like a little nest. Whoops, okay, you just go like, whoop, whoop, and then you put it over here on your tray. You see that? And you just let it sit like that and it can dry. Or if you want to freeze it, you make little nests like this and put them on the tray just like that. Nothing, you know, no oil, no extra flour, nothing like that. And you flash freeze them. Ooh, let's make a little, little nesty nest. Oh my gosh, these are so pretty, so cute. Can't wait to try them. I got my water going over there. As soon as I get these all on the tray, I'm gonna cook some up and we're gonna taste it together. And then I'll do the rest later. I don't wanna make you have to sit through all of that. Look at this, look how pretty. Oh my gosh, and you know, you can do this with other vegetables too to make different colors. In fact, we have a lot of beets 
that are in our garden too. They're getting to be towards the end of their season. That's our our fall and winter beets, and um, we're gonna be we're gonna be pickling some of them. We're gonna be eating them fresh and all that kind of stuff. But you can also use beets to color pasta too. And you know, you're get even though it wasn't a whole lot of uh, it wasn't a whole lot of spinach in this. But if you have a picky eater, you know, who doesn't want to eat anything leafy, you might try putting it in pasta. You never know. They might just uh, totally dig it. And then you're a hero. You can start sneaking good things into other food, too. Although we're not sneaking. We're being very obvious here. Look at that. See, that's a tiny one, but that doesn't matter. They all cook up and they all eat up perfect. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. All right, my water is boiling too, and that's it's kind of making me salivate <laughs> because I can almost taste it. You know, um, I am going to put some of the pesto that I just made with this, but you could also, you could use your favorite... Um, Pasta sauce with this, you know, tomato type base sauce, whatever. Uh, this would be great with just like butter, you know, and a little extra cheese grated on top. Um, or some olive oil grated on, you know, with cheese on top. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right, look, look. All right, this is half of it. All right. Now, supposedly, that's a serving of pasta. No, no, no. All right, maybe that's a serving of pasta. Eh, I feel like that's a serving of pasta. And, you know, but you do you. All right, I'm ready to put these in the water. Let's go. All right. I've got ample water. I'm going to add some salt. And then in we go. What am I going to use to take it out? I think this. All right, here we go. Nice. I'm going to put just four little nests in it. I'll save two for later. I would say I would save two for Will, but he's going to get more than that. All right. I'm going to set my timer for four minutes. And let's see what we get. Okay. I set my timer for four minutes. I tested it. And I thought it might need just a little bit more. So this is five minutes. I think it's going to be perfectly al dente. Oh, look at that. How beautiful. All right. Let's dress it. Mm -mm -mm. All right. I want to start with just like a big heaping glob of the spinach pesto maybe two but like I said you could use butter olive oil okay I'm going to oh oh that looks beautiful that looks beautiful oh smells so good I can smell the garlic from the pesto Smells amazing. You know, this would be a great dish for St. Patrick's Day. I'm just saying. All that beautiful green. I know. Throw a couple of little halved cherry tomatoes on there just for garnish. Make it pretty. And I have a great, an extra little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano for good measure. Look at that. Now, isn't that something that you would be more than happy to serve your friends and family? Huh? That is gorgeous. 
look at that. Let's taste. Okay, here we go. I'm so excited. I love pasta. I love pasta of all kinds, but I especially love homemade pasta. Take a little, just a little tiny twirl. Mmm. Mm. Oh. oh. So soft. But al dente. I don't know how to describe that. Um, it's just so luxurious. And I love the pesto with it. Uh, it's not like, it doesn't taste incredibly of spinach, if that makes any sense. I mean, this is so, so spinachy, yet it does not taste incredibly of spinach. It just tastes green and tastes like spring, tastes verdant like a verdant pasture. Oh, I love it. Okay, one more bite. Let's see, the tomato. Mm. Mm. Make sure you have a little bit of extra cheese to put over the top because that adds just the perfect amount. I might even do a grind or two of pepper. Oh, it's so good. I love it. I'm so glad you were here with me today when I made this. I hope you try it yourself. If you do, please let me know how it turns out. I love hearing from you in the comments below. And until next time, I will see you again on Cooking It Real. Bye, everybody.